I don't hide nothing about who I was, but I never ever killed anyone or even thought of killing anyone or put myself in a position to be even accused of killing anyone. Source Exclusive presents the story of John Bunn, wrongfully convicted, part two. Let's talk about the day you got exonerated. It brings us back to that day. Um, that day, like I, 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 I put it in terms as, as bittersweet. And the reason why I say that is because it was one of the best moments of my life. But for a person like me, right. like um, that go through everything you go through to be to get your recognition as being innocent, to get exonerated, you want the world to know that you're innocent, and you want them, you want the people that have been holding you back to at least say, you know, I'm I'm sorry that I, I hold y'all. This is why it was, you know, to me it's like a business to them with our life, and it's like. I can't get my life back, and it's like it's just like another like it's like another day in business for them. Like they, it's another you know another day on the job, and you know I felt like like I did I, I felt like I deserved more more from that from from them, you know. I came home and um I was I was I was happy off the fact that it's being home at first. Um I, w I was going through a lot, but then I came to my mother living in the same apartment. And, um, still living in poverty, and you know, I got I, I went through a state of depression where I started smoking marijuana and things like that, and it got to a point where um, I went into my mother's house one day and I asked my mother, I said, Ma, I feel like it's either going to get either all good or it's about to get all bad. Like I felt myself either going one direction or the other direction, and like I know I'm strong enough to do either or. Like I know I, I'm strong enough to do whatever I really want to do. Like if I want to do some negative stuff, I could put my energy towards it. I could really dominate that shit. You understand what I'm saying? And I know if I push my energy a certain way, I could dominate it too. And I just felt like I like it's time for me like to be bigger than the type of shit that I was raised in. Right, right. And um, like 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 maybe like six months after that, um, the EXI found me and they told me they was um rebirthing my case and they wanted to um. Look at my fab. So to me, it's always like this. I always get to a point where I feel like I don't know how, how I'm gonna go further, and then God will open up a door as long as I keep my heart pure and the right shit going on inside of me. Right. He gonna keep keep me pushing. Right. Since I've been home, I done been able to make like network with some great people that I never even thought or imagined. Like today is like a dream. Like you know, um, I grew up, I grew up in prison. Right. So like you know. Like even like the Source magazine was like culture to us, hip hop is right. culture to us, and a lot of the things that you know I'm actually experiencing, going through now is like all the dream of my mom because I got I got like you know my friend that been in a bunkie with me and, and inside of there, he know that like you know like I'm just making the commissary uh, commissary buys big, you know what I'm saying? Like my whole life really been based around me fighting for my freedom, and even when I came home, you know. It, it wasn't really celebrating because like I, I, I was I wasn't prepared for society. I was still institutionalized and I got like released like unexpectedly due to the fact that the situation that happened. Like I already had geared my mind for me to do another like ten years into the penitentiary because they kept on hitting me at the parole board. So I blocked myself off from the actual fact of me thinking I was gonna be released. Like I equipped myself for me to be able to be alright in prison. Like, you know, I, 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 was, I was institutionalized. So when I was released, I didn't really, you know, embrace the fact of me actually being released to the fact that there's being, being around my family at first, but then it was like, I'm still in the same situation. Like my mother was still living in the same apartment, you know, that I got arrested in 17 years prior. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step he took several in order to get exonerated 27 years later. When I first went into prison, one thing my mother would tell me is that like, you know, even though you went for something you didn't do, your character and how you conduct yourself is important because that's going to play a part when these people really come in and trying to, trying to free you. And I think like that's, that's real big. I think you, like if, if you in there for something you didn't do, you got to keep your heart pure and you got to keep your character like pure beat, you know, don't become the person that they that they want you to be. Be the person that you are if you know you're innocent. And um like don't don't build a negative prison is a negative place. You know, um my philosophy right now is to make positivity cool again. Um within the last year, um 
before I actually even got it, exonerated when I got my conviction vacated and I was free to parole, I started a book drop and I was actually like blessed to get the, the, the support of Source and like Del McMillan was like on deck from the beginning, like within the first two weeks that we started this. And he gave us the power like to really push out and start a book drop. And through over the course of the year, we done actually collected over 20,000 books. We done went to all different type of colleges. We done made it into Racket Silent, youth detention centers, public schools, libraries. We done made it into re-entry. We done made it into places that people never said we was. And my push is to like make positivity cool again. I, I know literacy is, is, is one of our main problems it, as far as when it comes down to us communicating with each other. Like we not even, we don't even have enough, you know, we not even educated enough to c communicate with each other properly. But as far as that study of them knowing um, how to prepare beds long ahead of time for guys with reading levels like that, I mean, it go beyond that to where you could just hide the truth in the book from a black person. You know, like um, this, that been our truth for the longest. And um, I think that's the, the the lack of awareness and the lack of know-how, how to go about doing certain things, sets us back. Like the average teenager that gets jammed up into the street lifestyle, by the time he's 25 and going back and forth in and out of prison, if he had the opportunity to do it all over and did it like the guy that did the right way, they, they would love to do it that way. It's just they feel they so caught up in it, they don't know how to go back and do nothing different. And then a lot of them don't have a lot of the opportunities. So what I'm trying to do with my platform is, for one, be the spokesperson of let them know that it's, it's okay to be cool. It's okay to stand for something positive. Because in our community, there's people that stand for like the, str the, the, the stronger people are the most negative people. What I mean by that is like the guy that they see selling drugs or coming through with the jury or the cause of things like that are perceived to be the guys that's successful and things like that. And for some reason, I believe that like the mentality of the youth in, in, in the urban community is that they could do crime and they're going to be able to change their environment or change their circumstances for the better. And that's not realistic. That shit is not even, that's not a reality. The reality is that you're going to um, cause a domino effect that's going to not only hurt yourself, your family, but it's going to hurt the likes of generations of people to come behind you. If, if there was a way that the, the criminal justice system could be improved so that mistakes like this wouldn't happen or repeat itself again, like from your personal experience, what do you think? Like, What advice can you give for some type of reform? I'm, I'm just going to be honest. Like, um, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know um, how to, if the system going to change. I just think that, like, one of the things I, I think help change the help change change the brothers in the system is, is like you know educating yourself. That's why I'm like I'm pushing the literacy program and pushing that to them. So I, I promote um, self education, but at the same time, like I'm, I'm, I'm my thing is to try to change the mentality of going back and forth into the system. Um, I, I don't know how to how to change the system for the better because the system is the system, and um. You know, I refer to the system as the belly of the beast, um, and I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see it as as a way. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't, never, I don't put my energy towards um, trying to change the system. I just, I'm just looking at the effect to try to change the people that's going into the system. If they could, if they could have, if I could have an effect from the mentality of thinking that that's cool to be a part of your life or lifestyle or you know even going through that experience at all ain't nothing cool about being in there but i i don't know if you could change the system as a totality i don't i don't even put my mind around that shit. i think hip-hop plays a big big percentage of everything we got going on in the black community as far as like it, it has a real um stronghold on our youth right now and it, 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 it's important because like when I was growing up, you had the tough guys that was even making records like Cool G Rap, Slick Rick and all them. Like they was really tough guys and they had influence on me too. I just don't want to single this out to the Tupac because I've been a rap fan since I was, you know, the music been, been our, is our culture. And I always like to look at it like this, like, you know, being that we came here and we went through slavery and everything that we went through, they kind of ripped us of our culture and erased, you know, our history. And hip hop, you know, for black people, is the only real sense of culture that we have for the younger generation that like we created our own it was our own culture like you got other ethnic groups here like um 
that come from different places that still got a sense of culture because they got a sense of where they come from. Right, right, right. We don't have a sense of where they we come from because we were stripped of everything, but we created a culture here that we feel is ours, and that gave us a sense of self. And at some point, the music became like glorifying genocide in our own community and it wasn't ever about that like even the tough guys that was making music would speak about the things they went through and they would try to paint a picture where people wouldn't have to go through it and try to it was a message in it and i just think that like the inter the rappers now need to come back into that full circle because you know it's one thing to be saying you come from a lifestyle and you you're speaking about where you're coming from and you you relaying the message and you without glorifying it, you could get that same message out there but it's one thing when you glorify the lifestyle and you you know you supporting genocide and that's what's happening and and you know uh uh um in our communities where you know these these young kids feel it's all right to pop pills and and, and shoot up each other and and um i think like like the real the real strong rappers could actually like you know um have the influence where they could wash away them them, them rappers that's throwing out that garbage rap right now like you got some real good dudes out there like meek mills you know that that's strong even you know even the guys like drake that's really straight out rapping you know i don't really get into like the hip-hop politic culture beefing and all that but i just think like um if they come more on deck their voice is, is very important and, that, and that's been my mentality from the beginning like to try to collaborate with, like the hip-hop culture and we could come together some type of way and, and, and come at the at the youth for for the right reason and, and tell them what's real but you could actually speak about the life that we went through, but you don't gotta glorify the nonsense. The media is the most powerful entity on earth. They have the power to make the innocent guilty and to make the guilty innocent. And that's power because they control the minds of the masses. Bun highlights how the media played an important role in his movement to reach the younger generation. The media, to me specifically, is, is special because like I told you, if it wasn't for the reporter from New York Times, um, Francis Robles, I never would have actually had a voice. And then not only that, it comes right back to bringing it full circle. When I started the book drive, if it wasn't for the media, the sources getting behind me and pushing me forward, that would have never been a realistic uh, uh, reality for me. I want to thank everyone that has been supportive of me and helping me push forward. I want to, um, particularly, I want to, I want to, I want to thank, um, the EXI, Exoneration Initiative, for always having my back and not turning my back. They promised me that they'd never turn my back and that we would get to this point at some point. And, and we here. So I want to thank them for, for being that crutch in my life. I want to thank my mother for, um, for enduring everything she endured all these years. And, you know, have, becoming a friend of mine at this point in my life and having my back. And, um, you know, not giving up on me. Um, because at times, you know, no matter what I've been through, you know, I always got my mother. Like, no matter what I went through, I, I, you know, like her or not, like, I call her mommy. Mommy there for me. She ain't never let me down. Like, you know. Um, I want to thank Judge Yana Simpson for being courageous and having the courage to do everything she did because this wouldn't be a reality if it wasn't for her. Um, I want to thank Ms. Frances Robles from the New York Times because without her giving me a voice, this wouldn't, wouldn't happen. Um, I want to thank um, the woman that actually came to my parole board. I don't want to say her name for safety reasons, but um, I want her to know if she ever watched this, like I know, like, thank you for being one of the most courageous women I ever met in my life and coming back and, and giving me new life, you know? And I thank you for that. Because you didn't have to do that. You could have just left me behind and said, you know, that's another N-I-G-G-A. Um, and I want to thank Londell for being like a, a role model for me and giving me, you know, the, the, the inspiration and the, and the motivation. And not only had the tools to actually push forward in real life. Like, I never had another black man in my life to actually, like, you know, um, take responsibility for trying to, like, help me in life. You know, in, in something positive, like for real, for real. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, take me under his wing. I never had that. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's special to me forever. And, um, if I forgot anybody, man, I love y'all all, man. I thank everyone that's been, you know, 
pushing for positive purposes out there. And everyone that's given me a, that shared their platform to help tell my story, and everyone that been posting, reposting me on Instagram and everything, and following me, I appreciate all of that. It's like a dream for me, and I'm, I know I'm blessed and overjoyed just to be in this position. Once again, people, you are now tuned into Source Exclusive with Mr. John Bunn. Um, and like I said, Mr. Bunn, things only gonna get better from here. Right? Just welcome home. Thank you, bro.